This is the Dice Fifth 13 here in my T29 on the Kharkov map. Now, leading up to this game, I was having a bad streak where I'd be the first one spotted at the back of the pack, and either artillery would get me, or a light tank would ammo rack me and not get spotted, or I was doing everything right. And I was left in a 1 versus 10 situation with 5 tanks immediately around me. So I wasn't too hopeful for this game in particular. But I decided, you know what? The best tank that I could possibly be in is the T29. And that's because I, I love this tank. This tank was partially the reason why I started World of Tanks. It was this tank and the mouse. Don't have the mouse yet. So this is the only tank that I can reliably go, hmm, yep, I need to play this. And the reason for that is it's not a complicated tank to play. It's it's a lot simpler than the Russian heavies, in my opinion. Mainly because instead of face the enemy directly or side scrape, which I could easily do in my German heavies, you get something that's uniquely towards the American tanks. That thick, almost impenetrable turret armor. Yeah, the hull's not the greatest, but if I wanted to play a tank with a good hull, I would play a German. I would play a Russian. Some, well, majority of the British tanks at this tier have better hull armor. What I play this tank for is those situations where the, ol the only thing they really have to shoot at is my turret. And then at that point, I've basically won the fight. Or, I'm just accurate enough that they can't really do anything to stop me. So on this tank, I've got the vertical stabilizers. Oh, what is the other thing? There's... I forget the other perk. I want to say it's... Off-road something? No, I don't think that's what it is. But it's a driver skill that also reduces the plume when you turn the turret. Well, when you turn the hull, there's the gunner one for when you turn the turret. Vertical stabilizers. And... I just really enjoy this tank because it doesn't take forever to aim. I mean, my accuracy is not the greatest, i.e. that, but in this position right here, that object 704 really doesn't have a good chance of standing against me. Now, I look behind me because I'm noticing that we're being shoved into this corner of the map. The entire team, well, yeah, the entire team's almost right all over on this side of the map. And we're down two tanks. Now we're being capped. There's plenty of tanks ahead of me. There's not enough behind us. So I decide to come back. And I don't know what this AMX 1390 was thinking. Let me just auto load into these tanks ahead of me and just kind of sit there. So, I'm all alone on this side of the map, and there's one light tank. Shut him down. So, first kill of the game, and oh, uh, this is not good. This is not good at all. Can I get a shot into the driver's heads? Nope. Uh, this is going to be difficult. There's not, a lot le um, there's not a lot of time left on the cap. I fluff that shot, and... I, this tiger has no hope of penetrating me. Oh, no, he does. So I'm thinking, oh, shit, I'm gonna die. This is it. I'm screwed. So tracks are repaired. I'm not too worried about the Pershing. It's that tiger's 88 mil that I'm worried about. Oh, this, this could be de bad for me. I mean, I've done pretty well in it. And there's pushing basically tears some distance between me and the tiger, which I'll gladly pay that 240 health for. And now, he's gotta worry about me. 
So, my team's... Let me just pause it right here. Our T5916 has reset the cap on that Ramachal Borsig. It's just that Borsig, the IS, which has got a KV-5 and a Ripper pattern, and then it's just me and this Pershing. I mean, this Pershing is screwed. The only way he's going to get me is an ammo rack. Not happening. Just not happening. As expected, the 5916 gets the kill on the Borsig, and there's not much health left on that IS. And with that, it's kind of a one and done situation. And all in all, I felt like that was a pretty decent game. I mean, yeah, there could have been some things that were done better, but at the same time, I feel like I handled a lot of the situations with at least some level of priority. That situation where I handled the tiger and that Pershing coming at me at the same time as they both came down that hill. I feel like I prioritized the tiger because of that higher penetration power. Turret-wise, there's no way either of them are going to get through me. However, that long 88 can be quite a terrifying experience to face. And that pushing just bounce shot after shot after on the side of my turret, giving me an easy two kills. Also, that AMX 1390, I think it was the 1390, it was either that or the eSports version of it, right here. Instead of going straight on at me, he should have gone to one side of me and forced me to turn my turret around to face him. And the big thing that I feel like I could have done better was at the very beginning. I faffed around way too much trying to figure out where in the world I was going to go. Was I going to go up towards the city? Was I going to go down here like I did? And would I stay there? Would I go up and try to get hold down over in this position? Would I go towards the outlying town like I did? That, those are some pretty big things that sometimes you just have to ask. Now, I guess it's to the post-game stats. And after results such as that, I, I, I was kind of expecting a good result. After a first class mastery badge, a shell proof duelist, obviously, because not only did that pushing ram me, the tiger also did a little bit of ramming damage as he tried to pass me. Pyro for effect, with how much damage I had done, it was kind of expected. Steel wall, again, this the turret of the T29. It makes no difference, you're not getting through it easily. To the team score, I came top on damage, which I was feeling pretty good about. Yes, I only killed three tanks, but it wasn't the amount of kills that was good. It was the quality of them. And second on XP. Now, I think this SPG from Smart, he really did a number. I mean, to get that many medals and whatnot, it was quite a nice result. And let's see here. This tiger, he could have played it a lot smarter, in all honesty. And I'm actually quite surprised that the Pershing, if I remember this, if it was this one or one of these Ripper patterns, this Pershing right here did fairly good. So maybe he wasn't as bad a player as I thought. He was just kind of panicking and seeing me basically. 1v2 him and a friend of his. I, I, I don't know why he just kept shooting at the side of my turret at that angle. It was really not the best idea. And here we go. 14 shots fired. And with that accuracy that I have on it, that kind of helps me. But at the same time, with my aiming ability, only 11 hit and 9 of those penetrated. Giving me 2,666 damage. Not bad for a tier 7, but the real big thing is this damage blocked by armor. 2070. Let's see. 
How much health did that tank have again? Huh. We got shell proof. Oh yeah, that's right. Um, let's see. So it's definitely a it's like what, one thousand five hundred and fifty I wanna say? I might be wrong on this, but I I'm actually probably certain I'm wrong, but anyway. And with only a 72 in assisting damage, that position that I earned, I'm very, very happy with that result. Now, I got almost 30,000 credits. Didn't fire any premium, didn't use any equipment. So the auto repair was about 5,000. Ammunition supply. 14,000, leaving me with 10,770 credits left. Which isn't that bad considering that, you know, this isn't a premium account that I run. If I had been, oh man, that would have been a lot of coinage to use. But moving on to experience, that all that performance got me 1,158 and then about 60 free XP. First one of the day, so of course that is all doubled, giving me a total, if you can't see right here, 2,316 XP. I feel like I'm getting better at World of Tanks, but then I have games that were leading up to this, and I then again question myself. So anyway, this has been the Desphere 13. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and share. It really does help out the channel. If you have a replay of your own to send in, just upload it to worldoftanksreplays.com, log in, it'll give you the option right up here where my name is, click upload replay, and once all that's done, give it a nice, interesting description, and once that's all done, go to the email down in the video's description, and send me the link to the replay, chances are I will watch it. So I hope you all enjoyed. This has been the Desphere 13, signing off. Bye.